Welcome back. You're watching Business Morning on Channels Television. We're talking about the markets now, uh, the fixed income segment of the market. That is, as more uh, companies, um, as more investors increase their appetite for bills and bonds, we find that more organizations are looking for ways to partner with some companies here in Nigeria to deepen that segment of the market. And very recently, the FMDQ OTC Securities Exchange, I talked about it, one of the events that we're tracking uh, for the month of February, that's going to be happening next week. The FMDQ OTC Securities Exchange will sign a memorandum of understanding with S&P Dow Jones Indices to, among other things, develop and launch a debut S&P FMDQ core branded index, which is a Nigeria sovereign bond index tracking the performance of local currency denominated sovereign debt publicly issued by the federal government of Nigeria in the domestic market. So how are analysts viewing this particular uh, piece of news and how is the market going to also be reacting to this? I'm being joined on the program by Ibrahim Babalola, who is an investment research analyst with AfriInvest. Ibrahim, good morning to you. Thank you for joining me on the program. Good morning, Harriet. Thank you for bringing us here. <laughs> Again, so talk to us a little bit about uh, S&P Dow Jones indices. So this is, uh, well, just talk to us a little bit. So, you know, there's one of the um, oldest um, index providers in, in, in the world. Um, I think they have the, 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 the largest um, index in um, S&P 500. Uh, so they've been around, they've been around for over 120 years, 120, 120 years uh, been around. And what they've been trying to do recently is trying to deepen the, the African penetration. So they've come into, they've come into um, African countries to try to speak to the guys managing the equity markets and the fixed income market and try to form pa partnerships with them, which um, this is uh, as a result of the conversations that, that they've been having. Um, uh, from our side, it's, it's a plus for both um, the FMDQ um, exchange and um, and and S and P as well. Um, S and P has been covering Nigerian sovereign bonds since um, 2014. They have a, a S and P Nigerian sovereign bonds index, and FMDQ has um, their own um, sovereign bonds index as well. I think one of the reasons why FMDQ says they're going into this partnership is to you know pro um, improve transparency, um, data transparency, and uh, integrity of data. So for foreign investors that are looking at the data that are being provided for the index, um, they, they would be to be more reassured um, about the integrity and the quality of the data if it's coming from, from, from S&P or in a partnership with, um, with, with S&P. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's a win-win for both parties, really. FMDQ and S&P. And then it also now makes a, a lot of you know, people to sit back and, and mm -hmm. ask this question. R remember that JP Morgan took us off their index mm -hmm. uh, sometime in 2015? And, um, from the emerging markets index. From the emerging markets index, mm -hmm. as well as Barclays Bank. And not to, to, to forget uh, Morgan Stanley's mm -hmm. uh, um, emerging markets index as well. What does this now mean? What does this now tell us? Having S&P coming into uh, Nigeria to partner with FMDQ? I mean, as I said, S&P, they're trying to deepen the, the, the African penetration, but I don't think this would then result in um, JP Morgan re readmitting Nigerian bonds or, or MSCI. But then that was one of the reasons why they gave, why they decided to take us off, because they felt investors were not so comfortable, confident, confident in that segment of the market anymore mm -hmm. because of FX pressures and uncertain policies as well. So investors were not so keen mm -hmm. you've, with you've, international you've, you've, investors. You've, you've answered the question, really. The problems are still the problems. You know, the reasons why it, we were kicked out of these indices are, are, are still there. They're still persistent. So the currency controls and the, the FX um, liquidity challenges, um, uh, I think it's been over a year now, and these this problems are still there. And until, um, until there's been significant improvements in the management of the FX markets, um, there, there wouldn't be a review of of the decision to, to remove us. Uh, Nigeria was admitted into um, JP Morgan's, JP Morgan's Emerging Market Index, I think was the second African um, country to be admitted after South Africa. And it was after the former CBN governor, Sanisi Lamido Sanisi, stopped. Uh, there was a rule then that said foreign investors had to hold Nigerian bonds for at least a year before they could exit. And until when that rule was revoked, that was when they admitted us. So, until the currency controls and the you know the challenges with the FX markets are properly properly addressed, we, we, I don't think there will be a, a discussion surrounding readmitting Nigerian Nigerian bonds in the in the in the in the indices. Mm. 
So that's one conversation that we're going to have because it's, it's very broad. Mm -hmm. Even if we're starting now, uh, I know that Robert has been on the program before mm -hmm. and we've talked about uh, central banks, uh, FX policies, mm -hmm. whether it's a protectionist in nature or if it's uh, stifling mm -hmm. and, and the rest of it. But that's conversation for another day. Today we're looking at the fixed income segment of the market. <laughs> now, a, a lot of um, analysts and a lot of investors will be wondering how would the index be positioned vis-a-vis -vis other frontier markets like South Africa, for instance, and um, well, other uh, African markets in Sub-Saharan Africa. I mean, one, one thing is this, this partnership would, would make um, investors start looking at Nigeria and say, okay, um, why is S&P partnering them? But then when you, when, you then come, when you then look at the country and then what you say the fundamentals, and the fundamentals are still weak, you see, um, the FX, particularly the FX, the FX challenges, you know, which will still deter, deter foreign investors from coming into the markets, despite um, the hedging opportunities with the with the futures contracts, you still have investors who are being wary of coming into the Nigerian market. The major, major challenge with foreign investors coming in is still the FX problem. So once this is not tackled, we'll still have foreign investors um, losing confidence and coming into the Nigerian market. So whether SMP is the one that's um, gathering the data for the index or the FMDQ, a name is a name if the structural challenges, are, if the structural problems are not fixed. But then it still benefits those who decide to go ahead and uh, enter into the Nigeria of uh, either treasury bills or FGN bonds trading. Of course. I mean, the, the yields are very attractive. You're not going to get 16% um, in advanced economies. You're not going to get 15 14%. The yields are very attractive. But then the yield, the attractive yields does not eliminate the, the liquidity risk and the reinvestment, the reinvestment risk or, or the currency risk. You know, you come into the market and therefore the depreciates and you lose whatever you've made from, from the yields in currency or the liquidity risk coming to the market so attract, on the back of attractive yields and you at the point of exit, there's no, there's no dollar to, to, to leave. So these, these, are the, these are the questions that foreign investors will always ask before coming to the market, despite attractive yield, you know. Would I, would I rather invest in, um, would I rather invest in uh, an instrument where I can get 1% and at the time of exit, I can take out my money easily? Or would I make 14% and be stuck? The answer is clear. Hmm. But then that, we, we didn't see so much of that in, uh, in January. We just uh, ended a few hours mm -hmm. ago. We still saw improved investment appetite in fixed income segment of the market, particularly treasury bills. Yeah, but a lot of that has been from local participation. A lot of that has been from local local participation, domestic participation in the markets, you know, fixed in, 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 in fixed income in fixed income instruments. Our, our investment strategy for twenty seventeen is um, to overweight on fixed income fixed income down equities, you know, from our friend invest. Well, so a lot, a lot of the participation, a lot of the improved interest that you've seen has been from, from, domestic, from domestic players. You know, we've seen um, the PFAs and the big fund managers moving away from equities, you know, on the back of the wishy-washy performance of, of, of the markets, moving to, 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 to positioning in, in fixed income instruments, T-bills and, 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 and bonds, bonds instruments. But then we're expecting that the, the debt management office will hold its second bond auction for mm -hmm. 2017 this mm -hmm. month, for the first quarter, that is. Mm -hmm. What are your expectations? Do you expect to see, because that was a little bit, uh, was not as, as not as impressive as previous auctions done by the debt management office, what we saw the January happening one. in January, yes. The, the January bonds auction was actually oversubscribed. Um, but not as much as previous auctions. Yeah, but what, what we've seen with um, what we've seen with the tables um, auctions and the home auctions and the bonds auction is that um, a lot of investors are now sort of keen into longer dated instruments. You know, but there's a short term expectation of um, reduced um, interest 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 rates. So when you look at, I think we've had three home auctions this year. Um, on the 6th, on the 18th, and probably on the 24th or 